Thanks to the success of History Channel's Pawn Stars, the Harrison's Gold and Silver Pawn Shop in Las Vegas has become famous all around the globe, attracting more and more customers with very special and unique items. The guys cannot always come to an agreement with their customers, but if the price is right, they are willing to spend some big bucks. So stay tuned as we take a look at 10 mega deals made on Pawn Stars. After hearing that an original Andy Warhol had just sold for $6 million, Paul decided to take his not one, but four original Warhol paintings to the gold and silver pawn shop to see if he could get a good deal. He asked for $8,000 for each of the pieces, but Rick quickly noticed some water damage and warned Paul that that would affect the value. He then called in his expert to check the paintings out, and Brett confirmed their authenticity and explained that they were probably early works from the 1950s. Due to their water damage only being on the edges and not affecting the compositions themselves, the expert added that they would probably sell for around 10 grand at auction, with two of them even going for as much as $15,000 each. Based on what he had heard, and keeping in mind the commission fee he would have to pay at auction, Rick decided to offer $20,000 for all four paintings, but Paul pointed out that just the fairy and the cherub were worth $30,000. He eventually struck a deal with Rick for $27,000 and walked away happy, saying that it was more than he expected to get. In season 11 of Pawn Stars, a customer came to the shop with a copy of the Treaty of Amity, Commerce and Navigation, which is also known as Jay's Treaty. What made this copy so special, however, was the fact that it had belonged to Thomas Jefferson. Because he sold his original library to the Library of Congress, any of his personal books are rather rare to find anywhere else. But the customer's great-great-grandfather had worked in the Senate when Jefferson died, and bid at the estate auction in Jefferson's retirement library where he purchased the book for just 15 cents. Rick called an expert in who confirmed that the book was indeed Jefferson's personal copy that contained his handwriting as well as his unique way of marking all his books. Because Jefferson is very popular among book as well as autograph collectors, the expert estimated the value of the copy to be around $75,000. After some haggling, Rick and his customers struck a deal at $50,000, which would have surely made the great-great-grandfather very happy. It's gotta be 50. It's gotta be oh 50. Oh my I god. Cannot, I cannot go below 50. Deal. Sold. In the season 7 episode Close But No Cigar, a man walked into the pawn shop claiming he had a cigar box that John F. Kennedy owned while he was president between 1961 and 1963, which still held several cigars. It is a known fact that press secretary Pierre Salinger bought 1,200 Cuban cigars for JFK the day before he signed the Cuban embargo, and so the seller was looking to get $95,000 for the box and its remaining cigars. However, after mentioning that he owns a private museum and is looking for some quick cash to move to a bigger facility, Eric gave Rick a small advantage in the following negotiation. Rick's initial offer was just $50,000, and even though Eric was hesitant to lower his price too much, they eventually struck a deal at just $60,000, of which he would get one half in cash right away and the other half after some paperwork. Although it might not have been the worst deal ever made in the show, it is never smart to admit that you are looking for some quick cash when haggling with the tough bargainers from the gold and silver pawn shop. After his grandmother passed away, one man was cleaning out the old woman's belongings when he came across a gold bar hidden away in a box. Not knowing how much it was worth, he decided to take it to the pawn stars to find out more. Simply melting the gold bar down would have brought the man $24,000. However, after an expert confirmed that the gold bar was actually from the 1554 Spanish shipwreck of Padre Island in Texas and worth twice as much. So you're telling me that's worth $48,000? In that neighborhood. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Alright, thanks for coming in, Miller. My Here's pleasure. It. The lucky finder of the treasure agreed to sell the bar to Rick for just $35,000, and both men walked away happy from the transaction. After being told to invest by his father, one man decided to buy around 210 pounds of silver in coins and bars before bringing it to the gold and silver pawn shop around 12 years later. <laughs> I've never seen you get up from your desk that quick. I always get up, son. Not generally very Move quick. Your hand. 
Of course, Rick checked the coins and bars thoroughly, drilling holes into the bars to see if they are really all silver and not just some other metal coated in silver. Jeff, the owner, had never even thought about the possibility of the bars not being pure silver and was relieved to hear that everything was in order and his investment didn't turn out to be a mistake. After weighing everything, Rick did some calculations and the two agreed on the insane sum of $111,000, which was a lot more than Jeff had initially paid more than a decade earlier and made this one of the biggest payouts in Pawn Stars history. I'm gonna take one of these, Rick. Um, no, no, you're not. Come on. Eric, the guy who sold JFK's cigar box to Rick, came back to the gold and silver pawn shop in season 8, looking to sell Elvis Presley's Superfly coat. He had purchased it from the owner of an Elvis museum in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and was now asking for $75,000 for the piece. After Rick's expert Jimmy Velvet, founder of the Elvis Presley Museum in Memphis, Tennessee, and a close friend of the King of Rock and Roll confirmed that the coat was authentic, Rick made an offer of $40,000. Although Eric tried to get the pawn star to negotiate and eventually nearly begged him to up his offer by five grand at least, Rick stuck to his guns and the two ultimately agreed on a deal. While Rick became the new owner of Elvis's Superfly coat, Eric went home with one of the biggest payouts in Pawn Stars once again. All right, I'll meet you right over there. Let me put the jacket on first. Go right him up. Go right him up. In the second episode ever titled Confederate Conundrum, a trivia question revealed that the most expensive item ever sold at the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop up to that point were four one kilo gold bars. The beautiful gold bars were a pretty rare find even for the Harrisons, who have seen a lot of very unique and special items over the years, and with $128,000, this became one of the biggest purchases the Pawn Stars owners ever made to this day. In an episode that aired in early 2018, Rick went to an art gallery to meet a guy called Nick who was ready to let go of a collection of 12 original illustrations of Maurice Sendak's famous children's book Where the Wild Things Are, one of the author's earliest books that was written and illustrated by him. Due to the great condition of the drawings, Nick was asking for $375,000, and a slightly shocked Rick decided to call the art guy Chad to take a look at the collection. Chad said that just the first two of 12 drawings would probably go for 80 grand apiece, and estimated that the whole collection would bring about $310,000. After trying to lowball his customer with just 200 k um, What I could probably do is try to kind of meet you in the middle, maybe I could do like 300. That's not me in the middle. Nick eventually agreed to accept 250, which still made this the most expensive purchase the Pawn Stars have ever made on the show. In 2013, the car rental company Hertz created 150 limited edition Ford GT Mustangs in a partnership with American entrepreneur Roger Penske. The first 10 cars produced were even more special as they had a 6-speed manual, so when a man offered Rick one of these first 10 cars, he was hoping to get $85,000 for it. After a professional NASCAR driver Joey Logano gave it a test drive to confirm that everything was in good shape, as it seemed, Rick managed to beat down the seller and bought the Mustang for 60 grand. In season 15, a man named Greg came to the gold and silver pawn shop, offering Rick an original Abraham Lincoln signed parlor card, which was the basis of the Lincoln penny. That's pretty amazing, the ones that he signed. I've only heard stories of these existing. Rick was aware of how rare this card was, thinking it might even be the only one in private hands. Greg revealed that he had purchased the card at an estate sale, saying that the sellers probably didn't even know what they were selling. Looking for some money to invest in his Lincoln collection, Greg asked for an incredible $100,000. Rick obviously called in his expert, and Stuart Lutz confirmed that the card was genuinely signed by the 16th president and valued it at around $150,000. Greg was obviously happy to hear that, and after an unsuccessful attempt to get Rick to pay more than that hundred grand he had asked for earlier, the two struck a deal and Greg happily left the shop $100,000 richer. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.